Hi everyone, my name is Eva and I'm a fashion photographer based in Tokyo. Happy New Year! I'm glad to have you here again. I wish you all the best in 2024, even though, as you might know, we haven't had the best of time in Japan in, ever since this year started. So, yes, thoughts and prayers for all of us here. Anyway, I recently had the opportunity to travel to Tohoku, which is the northeastern part of Japan, specifically to Miyagi-ken, and I wanted to share some of my impressions from this trip. Uh, specifically Kisenuma port. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's a fishing port city in the northeast and I have had the pleasure and honor of going there several times. I kind of wanted to mention and show you what it looks like because this was one of the areas most affected by the earthquake and tsunami in 2011. I was supposed to be on a holiday. holiday with the uh, 40 degrees fever and um, tonsillitis it was fabulous but but here we are <laughs> so forgive me looking like trash in these videos I was actually feeling like trash which you can actually tell from the exterior aka my face uh, I was dying for four days straight Luckily for all of us here, I survived. For example, this massive wall that is about, I think, 10 meters tall or so that is supposed to kind of break the tsunami wave if it ever comes again. I've actually had the pleasure of um, going um, seaweed picking years ago. <laughs> I don't remember why they pick seaweed in February and it was about 2 or 3 a.m. when we boarded the ship, I mean the boat. It's a smaller boat, it's not a big one. And we had all this winter gear and it was absolutely freezing. It was, I think, minus several degrees, and it was like dead of the night. And then the water is splashing everywhere, and there was like nets and like people pulling on the ropes that actually seaweed get caught onto. We actually went through the whole process of bringing the seafood from the origin to the table, and I had the pleasure of taking some photos of that. Anyway, there is another interesting relic of the happening in 2011, which is this. Um, well, I cannot really call it a tree, but it is a tree. It actually looks like a dragon. Speaking of little trivia info, we are in the year of the dragon this year. <laughs> I don't really... I'm a monkey in Chinese zodiac, I think. I don't even feel like a monkey, nor do I feel like a dragon. See, there's a... Uh sunlight beam coming through the dragon face and it's the year of the dragon now so I wanted to take that photo it's very nice I don't know why I'm saying that <laughs> it's in this uh, landmark park area near the coast it's glorious and then beyond this area that's completely fenced there is like um, a bunch of rocks the whole Sandiku coastline it's like very zigzaggy so you can actually see the rocks from the terraced fenced area of the park right and there's like this huge kind of gazier looking water spray that kind of explodes in like a really thin line maybe it's gonna come out soon there it is look <laughs> let's try to take a photo of that Oh my god. Come on. <laughs> it's not coming at all. I've been waiting here for a half. Tatoma. 
Very nice. Ah, Sunday. Put it there. I did my best. I struggled with fever against the wind to bring you this fabulous content. Why is this important is because I promised in my previous video, if you've watched that one, if you haven't, go watch it right now because it's relevant to this experiment. I promised I would be trying my best to experiment with a different genre of photography, which in this case could be landscape. I am still not used to the XT30 Mark II. Uh, I kind of find it difficult to kind of switch to the button controls and switches from the Canon cameras that I usually use. But I like it. The quality is superb. Uh, what I found lacking maybe was my kit lens. That's the only one I have at the moment. Why? Because I thought I was gonna try it out first and see if there is anything lacking actually that I might actually find in a different lens. I don't really like the zoom. I don't really know why. I just don't like it. <laughs> yes, I know. So the lens is making the camera not as compact as I would like it to be for my daily use. So we're going to look into that. If I have some spare change. <laughs> spare change for lens. Yes, if I have any spare change I would love to get a pancake lens, just so it's more compact and easy to carry around. So far, that's my only kind of uh, complaint against my setup. I know you must be wondering why am I complaining about my own setup when I actually bought that setup. Take it slowly, we'll get to my ideal setup eventually. The whole day was without a plan. Whoever goes with the plan of sightseeing. I wasn't really sightseeing with the fever, but I was on holiday, so. Okay, you can actually take these as holiday photos. Fabulous. <laughs> we can make a photo album out of this. So, nice view. So, I climbed up all the way to Oshima and have this gorgeous view over here. I wanna take a couple of photos of that. And then, I'm gonna go down to a little shrine to get my stamp plastered in my book, so let's take a couple of good shots here. It got a little bit darker because it's before sunset, it's about 4 p.m. right now. I'm gonna try to use the zoom on the camera to see maybe what they're gonna look like. Look at this. Oh, by the way, by the way, this is Tsubaki. You get your hair oil from those. It's cute, right? It's very pink. <laughs> I use it too. It's, like, it's fabulous, it smells really nice. Anyway, Tsubaki, gorgeous pink flowers, nice view. I absolutely loved it. I realized that I absolutely love uh, Fujifilm's film modes. Black and white one is gorgeous, however, I need to say this, I think I might prefer the Ilford film stock. I converted this photo to some Fuji's basic black and white mode, and then I kind of applied uh, Delta presets. moment of silence. Looks glorious though, right? Right? I can sell it as a print. Actually, not a bad idea. I can sell it as a print. You can buy it as a print. I'm just kidding. Um, next on my list was, yes, the big... Well, it's another wall. But it's a walkable wall. You can actually go to the other side of the wall. Important to note here is that after these walls were built, people in the coastal area cannot see the sea anymore. You see the irony there? Cannot see the... 
Anyway, the landscape from above the wall is glorious. That's why we went, or why I went. There too, these concrete thingies are also to break up the waves. Let's go over there. See. It was too small. Too tiny. Some way. It's huge, right? Nanka kure no koi nanka katachi. Okay. I think we're good here. My expedition is over and we can drive back home all the way to Tokyo. 400 kilometers. 5 I don't know. It's it's eight hours, so we better get going. And I can't wait to show you the pictures. <laughs> if I survived <laughs> falling off from this cliff, oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah. And then you come home and you load the, load up those photos, and it's glorious. The pictures are awesome. And then you realize. Tonsillitis, fever, wind, minus degrees, doesn't matter. I hope you liked the video and I hope you liked the photos and let me know in the comments what you think of them and if I should stick to fashion photography. <laughs> if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you in my next one. <laughs>